secondly, what about atheism? Well, I hate to correct him about his definition of atheism, but he's simply wrong. Atheism is not just the absence of belief in God. Let me turn to the standard work in the field of philosophy, uh, standard reference work, the Encyclopedia of Philosophy. It quotes, according to the most usual definition, an atheist is a person who maintains that there is no God. In contrast, an agnostic maintains that it is not known or cannot be known whether there is a God. Mr. Zindler has clearly confused agnosticism with atheism. Uh, and the debate tonight is supposed to be over atheism, the proposition that there is no God. And so I invite him again, defend that point of view. I've come here to debate, give me some arguments for atheism so that I can deal with them. Madeleine Murray O'Hare in an interview in Life magazine said that uh, agnostics are just atheists without guts uh, <laughs> because they're afraid to speak up. So we're not here to just talk about agnosticism. I want to hear the arguments for atheism. Why is that important? Well, simply this. Even if all the evidence that I gave for Christianity is wrong, that doesn't prove that God does not exist. Kai Nielsen, an atheist philosopher, writes, to show that an argument is invalid or unsound is not to show that the conclusion of the argument is false. All the proofs of God's existence may fail, but it still may be the case that God exists. In short, to show that the proofs do not work is not enough by itself it may still be the case that there is a God. So he's got to give us a positive case for why God does not exist. 